ahead. So, Harshit, why don't you first introduce yourself to us, and and let's let's go through some ideas on hey, what does what 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 does community bonding mean, etc. Okay, so I am. So as you all know, my name is Harshit, and I am an Indian student pursuing my bachelor's degree from Punjab University uh, in computer application. Dick. Excellent. And so, Rishab, you want to introduce yourself next? Justin, then then I'll take a few a, a few sentences. Okay, um, Harshit, I am Rishab. <laughs> I am a backend developer. I, you know, I've been working for almost a year now. Uh, I was a GSOC student last year. The same uh, for the same plugin, Git plugin. My project was related to performance improvement. Uh, Mark and Justin were my mentors, and I had a really great experience with them. Great learning experience. I hope you have the same here for this year. And Justin, nice you want to go you. next? Yeah, Justin Ringa. Um, I'm a little bit of a chameleon. Uh, <laughs> I guess my current, I've done front end, back end, and uh, I guess I'm more CI, CD these days. Um, but I uh, have a lot of time on like working through Jenkins project and stuff like that. I've opened source some plugins and helped submit some PRs to existing plugins. Uh, this will be my third GSOC uh, for Jenkins. And uh, yeah, it's good times. Uh, I'd like to echo Rishab. Uh, last year was excellent and it was great working with uh, the two of you. And uh, looking forward to working with you also, Hardship. Thanks, Justin. And I'm Mark Waite. I'm a, I'm a uh, longtime Jenkins user. I've been the maintainer of the Jenkins, one of the maintainers of the Jenkins Git plugin and Git client plugin for probably six or seven years and been involved with Jenkins longer than that. Uh, discovered that you, did, you don't have to be brilliant to help with important plugins and you don't have to be especially great as a programmer, but uh, it's wonderful to be part of a community that lets me do things and, and learn things and grow. So uh, I've only done one Google of Summer Code pr of previously, and that was with Rishab last year. So we'll, we'll look to learn together and grow together and have good experiences together. So next, next thought on my mind was that in the community, to remind us what the community bonding period is and what it what it describes here on the Google Summer of Code site is that it's the period of time between when accepted students are announced and the time these students are expected to start coding. So this time is an excellent one to introduce students to the community, get them on the right mailing list, working with their mentors on their timeline for the summer, et cetera. So I think of this as planning and, and preparation and getting to know each other and identifying processes we should use um, Rishab, maybe you can share some of the things we learned from from our last time of places where community bonding wasn't as wasn't as, as perfect as we would have liked, or things you say, oh, let's be sure we don't forget to do this during community bonding. Uh, yes, Mark, that, that'd be great. So uh, for me, when I started, uh, community bonding uh, was more about. Um, I would say being comfortable with the mentors and like establishing, um, uh, I would say, uh, an open communication channel with them, being comfortable, uh, asking doubts and understanding uh, the plugin. I, um, I and I mostly spent my time actually since my project was more research based. I, I was spending my time doing that during the community morning period and. Uh, my assumption was that I cannot make a good design proposal, or I would say a design plan for my project because I don't I'm not, I just don't know what I'm going to code right now because I don't, my, my, uh, in my specific case, it was uh, imperative that my research shows uh, something which will actually uh, give us the, um, the blueprint of what we want to code so it, so because of that i 
did not i would say uh, use the community bonding period to uh, foresee or plan uh, how my uh, development experience is going uh, my development plan is going to be for the rest of the gso and that uh, i would say got us into some issues um, at later stages so what i would suggest is uh, planning is definitely a major part of the community bonding period first is yes i i would say uh, the, the priority would be set like be comfortable with the mentors with the community try to understand the code base if you already i, I am sure you must have looked at some part of it um if you have doubts ask that regularly uh, you can you can ask anything from everything don't don't hesitate and and then i would say plan planning is ready essential at this stage it might seem like uh, you know we could uh, the, the the proposal we've sent or you've sent at the at this stage might uh, uh, might you know you could start with that but i i would say just uh, this now that you have more uh, time the mentors are going to give you more time you should discuss that uh, extensively and uh, come up uh, you know with a feasible plan for the summer a design document is is uh, i would say uh, the preferable uh, preferable way to go that makes sense yeah so harshid i've i've started a um i realized that i hadn't started meeting notes for this session so i'm going to share a screen with with meeting notes on it and let's go through and we'll just i've already captured some of the things that that um rishab had noted let's go through that and we'll we'll talk about it together let's see so sharing screen now great all right so all right can everybody see my screen okay yep okay so Red the project mind. plan oh go ahead oh nothing i was just i was gonna say oh should we create some minutes you did <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 okay sorry yes that's 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 this is me trying to get get on the ball here. Okay, so so what we could do is I think Rishab already highlighted a good thing. We could review the project plan and have mm. Harshit talk through the project plan as already identified, so that we could just have a conversation about it, discuss it here. That that might be one very good thing to then allow Harshit to to form a deeper plan or answer questions. Uh, one of the things that Rishab noted also was. Um, identifying the work to be done during the project. And for me, this one is particularly complicated in testing and validation because of the, the many different places that we've got to, many different things we've got to check. So I was thinking we talk about implementation and talk about testing both. Um, are there other topics that any of you would like to put on the list as for today, I and I apologize, I have a hard stop in an hour, actually a hard stop in about 40 minutes because I've got another meeting that starts 45 minutes from now. Uh, I, I have um, an idea, Mark and Justin, could you uh, validate it? So um, uh, I, I think I did not, re at the time I was starting, I did not know uh, the development life cycle of you know, uh, creating a feature, coding it, and then testing it, and then finally pushing it to production. Uh, I I don't know if it's feasible, but would it be possible that we give um, Harshit a small task, which uh, can be a feature or could be, I'm sure he has, has fixed some bugs. But the point is that um, if he's able to code that plan, code, test, and deploy it, uh, maybe he would understand how much time he has to keep while he's planning.
for a feature, a simple feature to go into production because that is something I, I, I would say I underestimated while I was planning. And I thought that okay, this is simple to code. I'll I'll do it and then it goes to production. I'll I'll test it as well with some unit tests. I did not realize that uh, the testing is extensive and it's considerable because we have uh, a huge audience for the plugin. Good. That that's a that's a good idea. So Harshid had com submitted a uh, he'd submitted a fix for Jenkins thirty eight six ninety nine in PR ten sixty four, and and that one Harshid you can you can probably talk to that better than anybody. All of the things that you went through to get to get to finally having an implementation to having an implementation there that oh yes this does what we expected etc okay so that issue was regarding the uh, uh, the deletion of the files that was caused due to due to the plugin uh, we ws cleanup plugin i guess Right, exactly, and and but there were there were complications, if I remember correctly, in that one when when exploring. Okay, what do we what do we do with it? How do we fix this? How do we test it? At least for me, there were a number of things I had to do in investigating it to see. Oh, what's going on? It's because so derived from six ninety two. So, so it's. I think Rishab's got a good suggestion. Should we, should we put you on? Should we identify something where, hey, as a, a first-time contributor, take this other thing also through to all the way to production? Or are you already comfortable, Harshit, that that you think you've got a handle on how the workflow operates in the Jenkins community? No, I'm not that comfortable. I mean, I need to understand a bit about the Jenkins architecture also and the plugin development structure. Good, okay, all right. So then, then that, that may be a better choice than, than that's a good thing to do to be doing in addition to the planning. I like that. Very good. Okay. Rishab, were there any any specific tasks that you had in mind as you think about things that helped you learn or or prepare better? Were there specific things that you thought, oh hey, this was a good class of issue or this was a good type of issue? Uh, so as far as I remember correctly, um during the community bonding period, I was uh, I was working on working on some bugs. I remember. Uh, so uh, for me, uh, the most I learned by uh, the the source code for Git plugin, I, I learned mostly uh, while creating unit tests for uh, some of the cases, uh, some of the bugs I was fixing. I think uh, I would have to look through them. But the point is that. Uh, the uh, mostly my learning experience uh, or the exploration phase with uh, Git plugin source code was uh, during uh, solving friendly issues and writing unit test cases for them. Uh, yeah, I would say I'd say that's how I progress. And with the Jenkins architecture, I I think there was a limited. Uh, it's, I think it's a huge uh, thing to commit to, but I, I, I think I, I learned as, as much uh, context would require for me to do my project, I would say. And uh, yeah, I, I think I would need to think more about that. Um, uh, what were the issues which actually helped me? I, I could probably list some of them out. Uh, which helped me because I, I specifically remember that 
um, writing unit tests was uh, really helpful because I got to know, uh, you know, certain uh, Git nine APIs. I I actually looked through the code a lot because of that. Also, if like I would like to add something. So the mm -hmm. issue that I'm currently facing uh, in the planning phase is the web uh, is the UI implementation that how I will be, uh, how will the user interact with the, the code? I mean, the feature that I am providing in the pipeline job. Oh, okay, good. All right. Well, so, so that, that is a, how will the user interact, interact with the credentials binding inside a pipeline job. Okay, good. All right. Yeah, and uh, there's a few good guides of plugin development too. I wonder, uh, and I could link those to you if that's helpful. Um, but that, those might help you kind of figure out some of these things. If you haven't seen them before, you perhaps you have. I know docs don't always tell the whole story. So sometimes getting your hands dirty is, <laughs> is helpful. So Yeah, so there is, I mean, we, there's certainly the, let's see, where is it? The Jenkins tutorial on, in the developer guide, there's this tutorial as, as one of the steps. And then there's the archetypes, repository as a different approach. It will introduce you to a number of the um, different controls that are available in a in in the UI. Let's see. So no, not that one. So we want the archetypes. There we go. This one. So this one has, and how do you do? How do you get started by if you wanted to create a brand new plugin? Now I don't think in this case we're creating a a brand new plugin, although that's that may be possible. Okay. Oh yes, right. Very good choice. The forms section is very much focused on UI. Yes. Yeah, and then I dropped another plugin development page. Uh, I don't know if it's linked to from that other tutorial, but uh, that's also a really good one. Okay, so let's grab that one, which was this one. Oh, yes. Okay, very good. All right. And then, of course, if you have questions, like, feel free to ask us, and we might be able to point you to other specific things, too. This will help you avoid a little bit of going too far into the rabbit hole. Right. And I just remembered, uh, Mark, you shared two very good uh, documentations with me uh, related to uh, SC, SCM API consumer guide and SCM API implementation guide. Those were really yeah. uh, And uh, now, but now because Harshit's work is actually not around the S SCM API, I'm not sure that, that that will actually help him as much as we might have wanted it to because Harshit's Ish, Harshit's task is to work in the credentials binding and to create the environment such that um, it can we can use credentials binding with command line Git. So SCM API actually, I think, is probably not going to be involved for him. I'm not even sure that he'll be inside the Git plugin. That, that may be, but the, the piece that was that I'm expecting is Mm, you got it, got it. Yeah. Now, now credentials binding for me is is going to be a an interesting area because I'm not nearly as experienced in that as I am in in sort of the nuts and bolts of the Git plugin itself. Okay. So so I think I've heard suggestions here. Harshit, you had asked the question, how will the user interact with the credentials binding inside a pipeline job, right? And, and there is, 
if we look at Jenkins on this side, if we look at the pipeline steps reference, credentials binding. This was the is at least how the original idea was modeled that the user would do a with credentials and then the argument would be some sort of a git thing here a git username password. Um, and, and I think that was also in your project plan that that's how you envisioned it. Are you still okay with that as as the idea of how we approach it. Yes, this is fine that the code snippet generated will be used in the pi pipeline script and the uh, based on the uh, the credential ID and the all that all the other work such as username password will be taken care in the back end I guess. Great. Okay, very good. Oh, hang on while I mute my phone. Sorry about that. Okay. All right. So now, so tell me more about your question then, how will the user interact with the credentials binding? Are you in, because so, I was assuming it's just, it's, they would work with it like, well, as you were just describing using the pipeline syntax generator And here they would choose with credentials, with credentials. Whoops, where's my with credentials? Oh, now that's interesting. Do I not even have the credentials binding plugin installed? You do, you do, I, I did see you. Oh, there it is. Okay, good. All right, and then use a binding. And I'm, I was assuming that a new binding would be added here and conceptually like this one. So the username variable might be a secret and secret password. Oops, and it does not have anything. Oh, that's interesting. Okay, why doesn't my, well, so let's use private key. Uh, now I'm fascinated. Why do my credentials not appear here? Interesting. Huh? Might be scoped. Uh, yeah, except that they are all, uh, or at least a number of them are. Okay, so I don't understand why this is is doing what it's doing, but I was assuming this would be the user experience, ignoring the fact that I'm surprised at my uh, uh, at, that I don't have credentials ID. Is is this matching what you were expecting, Harshit, or is there something else that? Yeah, but I thought like the this snippet would be generated by the user in the in the pipeline job. Rather so, than going to a snippet uh, like uh, the pipeline syntax and generating it separately, it would be generated on the page itself of the pipeline and job. So so by that I think you mean I could go to a specific pipeline job and yes. inside that pipeline job oops yeah inside that pipeline job let's use a smaller one this one i might say i open up this job and here i go pipeline syntax for the same thing is that what you're th thinking okay that is <laughs> I did, okay. It's okay for you to, or, or would you like to share your screen and show us, show us what you had in mind? Because I, I, I think it's good for us to talk to each other um, and understand each other about where you're envisioning going and how we might, how we might get it. Mm.
Actually, my development setup is on another PC, so should I use that for the meeting? Yeah, that would that would be great if you can if you want to bring that in. We can have you share your screen, and you can talk us through the kinds of things that you're envisioning. Let me stop sharing. So, I will be joining the meeting now. Uh, I will oh, be and, joining later. And you can you can actually join from two different computers. You don't even have to leave the current one that's working. Oh, okay. One second. So Rishabh, while, while Harshit is getting connected, I realized that last year when we launched community bonding, I had a much better agenda ready. And maybe we ought to go grab that, that agenda thing and talk about if any of those That's... ideas make any sense. Sorry yeah, that I wasn't as well prepared this time as I should have been. Your agenda. Yeah, well, I don't see it. Take a look So here was here was what I Are you uh, sharing this screen? I'm not yet. Uh, oh, I should, shouldn't I? Because not until Harshit's ready with the second, we can be staring at this. So here were some of the things that we had suggested before. Update biography, and I think that's already been done, actually. I think Harshit has submitted Let's, okay, let's see if I can see our book. Yes, okay, so that one is done, good. And last year we had said, hey, convert the project plan into a, uh, an ADOC that we could put on Jenkins.io. Did, did you find that helpful when we did that last year? I mean, we're going to need it eventually. It'll have to be in the Google Summer of Code. Let's see how yes, did we do it. Did. We put it here this way last year, and I think, yeah, I think we'll need something like that. So we would, yeah. We should do because it's it's. I think it's a precursor to um, uh, writing blogs. Uh, after each uh, phase, we, we do that in ADOC, right? Uh, for right. So I think it will be a good exercise. Yeah, and then then we had the suggestion progressive milestones, and and that that feels like a really good thing. You were guiding on how how we didn't do that as well last last year as we should have. So. Uh, right. Parichai did at the time he did share a design document uh, with what he did and uh, so it was very with me the difficult thing was that it was uh, the research part of it and not knowing what we're going to develop made it difficult for me to create a design document at that time. Right, I and I think about it more well, and I think that I think that Harshit's tasks are are much less recess resource research loaded than yours were. Right, we don't have a question about which which implementation path should we take. At least, not nearly the same level as as we had with yours, because yours it was run a bunch of benchmarks, hmm. perform a bunch of a bunch of performance tests before deciding hmm. what we could even do. Okay, that's right. Yeah. Now, um, that's an interesting. We don't really have an upcoming release of the Git plugin to test. And these things, yeah, I don't think. And if I remember correctly, I th that one might be. But see, I'm not sure that unit tests for the Git client are as useful to to Harshit as they would have been to you, just mm -hmm. because credentials binding will have a different experience for him. 
Yes, and I think uh, it will be better that he spends time on, um, I think uh, two things first would be to understand the code and second, uh, exploring, uh, designing the doc, uh, uh, creating the design document. I think in, through that process, we would get a lot of uh, doubts and concerns and a direction to move on from this. Agreed. Okay. Okay. And this one, I think Jira getting comfortable with Jira is is going to be important because mm -hmm. the credentials binding plugin and the Git plugin both track their issues in Jira. Yes. Now I'm assuming that the Harshit, are you, I'm I'm just going on. I'm I should be less disruptive yeah. here. Are you ready to take over and share your screen? Yes. Okay, good. Excuse my being. You, uh, forgive me. You need to just be comfortable saying, Mark, stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is it visible, right? It is. Thank you. So I was thinking to put that in the configuration, configure part in the right, right here in the bottom. like the user will have the checkbox use like with the name git credential binding and will be, when we they will check it they can generate this snippet based on the credential and then select the credentials and use directly it in that here but uh, i didn't thought about that what you just showed me <laughs> so that's also nice yeah and so with go ahead just um, you would have that kind of block either in pipeline script here, or it would be in Git, as opposed to it being like um, kind of a checkbox. Yeah, that that was the thing I was confused about, like how we can put that checkbox through Git's plugin. Yeah, and I think Justin's right that I think we actually don't don't need it to be a checkbox on mm -hmm. the job because if you go down further to the, the pipeline syntax here, there, if you on the far right, the try sample pipeline, if you click and choose one of the drop downs there, um, either hello world or, so it looks like the down arrow is on the far right edge and oddly enough, very small. I don't know why it's so small, but click the down arrow that, yeah, just right, a little further to the right on your mouse and you'll click that arrow. Uh, it's, it's a button that's super, super narrow on your screen for some reason. Yeah, yeah that's weird. I've never seen it that small. <laughs> right. Is, is this a Mac OS? Is this, what, what's, your, what's your machine you're running? Uh, it's Ubuntu. Oh, interesting. Okay. So maybe you need to shrink the uh, the text with a control minus. No, it's I did, but it's not increasing. Huh? I, yeah, that's that's really quite interesting. Which, which and this is I assume Google Chrome. No, Firefox. Oh, interesting. Well, I just installed Firefox today. Now you've inspired me to check to see if mine should behaves the same. Can you bring it to 100%? Will it change anything? If you click on try sample pipeline, does it do anything? Yeah, see, mine is, mine is a full width drop down. And for some reason, your drop down, the the gray button on the right of the words try sample pipeline is much narrower than it is on mine, even on my Firefox. Hmm. 
And so if you click the try sample pipeline box there, it doesn't drop anything down, does it? No, it's dropping. It, it is dropping. It's menu dropped. Oh, uh, okay. No, so it's all it's just is we just have a visual problem. Okay. Because okay. to us, all we see is the words try sample pipeline with nothing dropping down. But you're seeing when you click it, it drops down and it shows hello world and mm -hmm. GitHub plus Maven and scripted pipeline. Mm -hmm. Same. Yeah, so My click LB. hello world. Okay, so yes. Okay, so, so now if you click the pipeline syntax link there at the bottom, it will take you out to that page where you could now generate a sample and now on sample step, click with credentials. This is reminding me when, when I created the project idea, I probably should have created a video to go with it because so when you click sample step and look down through the alphabetical list, one of them will be with credentials. And of course, none of the rest of us can see it because we're not seeing your drop down menus. But when you click that with credentials row, it will change to take to provide prompt for arguments for with credentials. Oh, oh, except of course, this assumes you've got the credentials binding plugin installed. Could you go out to manage plugins? Yeah, I'm seeing that. I installed it yesterday, but I don't know if I installed. I, I guess I installed it. Yes, it says no. perfect. And now do a download now and and we'll want to do a restart. Yes. And we'll want to have you update your Jenkins eventually, mm -hmm. but it's like a little checkbox down there that you can check and it'll restart Jenkins whenever uh... It's loaded. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so basically like those snippets are helpful for putting them into that, that box that we saw or putting them in Git. I think a lot of people end up having this in Git and then Git is just pulling the pipeline stuff. Uh, but this is a simpler way of looking at this without having to know all that other stuff for now. Perfect. SSH user private key is a good choice or username and password separated. Those are yeah, any one of those is fine. Any one of those two are fine. I'm not added the credential yet in this. I'm, I'm sorry, you say that again. How should I missed it? Uh, I have not added the credentials. Oh, uh, you, yeah, you have this. You see the same surprising thing that I see. So don't worry about that. It's harmless for now. I suspect there's a bug in the credentials binding plugin that it should be showing us something there and it's not. So type in a, 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 a name for the username variable. Uh, you could call it my username or Bob or Fred or whatever. Just the user will be famous. I think it might not show anything in that drop down if it doesn't have any credentials that qualify. Yeah, except yeah. that um, and since at least for me, instance. I had lots of credentials that qualified and it still didn't show them. Weird. Yeah, but, but okay, now if you click the generate pipeline script, that is what you would cut and paste into 
the uh, into that pipeline um, definition box that we had earlier. So if you do the hello world and now right after echo hello world or yeah, replace it, put it, paste in that with credentials that you just did. Yeah, and, and that's, that's the editing experience that I was assuming um, is okay, we work here because, because then like Justin said, ultimately the user puts this into a Git repository into a Jenkins file and they, they use it from the Jenkins file. Yeah, this is fine actually. My idea is a bit more. So the good news is, is that simplifies things for you because uh, some of the plumbing and stuff is kind of handled for you. Um, so some of the pipeline integration guide stuff will help you figure out how you can get this to work. Um, and what this ends up doing is there's, there's some stuff that you can do across both pipeline jobs, but as well as with regular freestyle jobs. Uh, where people do have all those check boxes and drop downs and all that stuff. Um, typically, the freestyle jobs are where you, you would see more like drop downs and things like that. And people would use uh, the credentials binding plugin in those kinds of jobs. But pipeline jobs typically is all, all pipeline all the time <laughs> for the most part. In fact, some of those um, check boxes and stuff end up being populated by uh, pipeline stuff in here after you've run a job for a weird reason. <laughs> so there's options to put some of this stuff and codify it into pipelines, and then it ends up showing up in some of those checkboxes. But the vast majority of options will be in this script or in Git. Mm -hmm. So Harshi, are, are you okay with that as, as a, an idea, as a way to approach it? Are you willing to explore that further and, and better understand it? Yeah, this is more simplified than mine, but it is perfect. Do you, would it help to look at how this looks for a freestyle job too? Well, see, I wasn't sure. Does the credentials binding? We hadn't actually intended to use a lot of credentials binding, or, or this particular technique is specific to pipeline. So I wasn't even worried about freestyle jobs. I mean, I does credentials binding operate in in freestyle? Yeah. Yep. Oh, okay. Most every so, well. <laughs> I think the vast majority of things you can do across them if they're if they're set up that way. Um, but yeah, I think there should be an option in here to do credential binding. Okay, so now now you've got me inspired. Where would I find a an a match for credentials? Okay, I don't see anything that looks like in a freestyle job, I could use credit. So Justin, maybe we could have you share your screen and show how that might work in, in a freestyle project, because that, that's a, that's a surprise to me. I was, my mental model hadn't, hadn't, didn't even have a place for it to be done in freestyle. Now I'm going to be embarrassed. I don't have a Jenkins on my computer. Oh no, that's okay. That, no problem. So, so yeah, if you would you be willing to would you be willing to tutor me and I'll share mine and you can guide sure. me on what to click. I'm happy to share. Yeah. Yeah. No worries. Okay. So, Harshit, are you okay if I stop the sharing with you for now? 
Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. And following Harshut's pattern, here is my Firefox. And this is a brand new, cre oops, let's make it a readable size, brand new created uh, freestyle job. Whoops, here we go. Okay, so I think so, your analog you're looking for in here is in a build step. Okay, so a build step. And I'm probably looking for something that calls itself um, a something about credentials binding, or is it? Um, try and just do an execute. So like an execute shell? Yeah, or maybe inject environment variables if this one doesn't show. Yeah, so it advanced. Okay, in advanced. Okay, maybe not. Okay, so how about we could do uh, inject environment variables? Although this I could, one, I could be incorrect here. Um, trying to think what that is. I can I can look into that and see if I can find it, and then maybe next time. Okay, yeah, let's it. let's put a put an item there to be sure that we have a discussion about. All right, so um, action items. Very possible I'm confusing this with uh, another thing, so I'll look into that. So if it's not possible for a freestyle job, then how would a user go about uh, performing authenticated get operations? The uh, they won't. Actually, that's that was my assumption from the outset is if you if you want to use authenticated command line get operations, you must use pipeline. So so my working assumption from the all and from the very beginning was this is only available through um, this project would only do only add um, authenticated git operations to pipeline. Okay. And and it's actually described there in the in at least in the original project idea that this is truly limited to pipeline. Yeah, and I yeah. my assumption. I was just saying that I assume that functionality wise, all of the project ways of building a job would be same, I would give the same functionality, just the way of doing it has changed and made things easier with pipeline jobs. But freestyle would cover all of the things. That's not true. Yeah, well, so, and, and that was, that's much bigger than the scope that, that the project idea had, had mm -hmm. envisioned. So, so it, it certainly could be done. I just don't know. Then we've then we've truly got the problem that Harshit was describing. How does how do we add a user interface that allows the user of a freestyle job to interact with an authenticated Git operation? Yeah, I, I think maybe we prioritize this one lower too because of given the scope conversation. <laughs> so, so I can right. I can do the research there. Uh, sorry, I rabbit hold us there, but. Yeah, but but then the question uh, I have is that uh, if uh, we're not looking into that because of the scope reasons, but um, uh, in our current uh, user base, how many people are creating freestyle jobs? Do we have an estimation over that? over fifty percent of all jobs now are pipeline? I am so proud of that. It's taken us <laughs> years to get there, okay. and the number of pipeline jobs is growing much much faster than the number of freestyle jobs. Friends don't let friends create freestyle jobs. What, what Justin said, friends don't let friends create freestyle jobs. That's right. That means that uh, it's safe to assume that this would be reaching to the majority of the users. Well, and, mm -hmm. and the users that it doesn't reach are already satisfied with what freestyle does for them. This is, this is intentionally focused on people who want more capability in pipeline than pipeline can give right now. So I apologize, we're reaching the end of my time. 
Um, Rishab had suggested it would be easier for him if we met one hour later. Harshit, would it be okay with you if we met one hour later? And my next question is, could we meet again tomorrow at this, this time plus one hour? So basically right now, tomorrow night, so that we could, before I leave on vacation, we could have at least had two sessions together. My college classes start by 8.30 a.m. Oh, okay. So it ne this needs to be earlier so that we get you because it's it's almost 8.30 now, isn't it, for you? Yeah. Okay. So then, then, then we really do need to do it at this earlier hour. So Rishab, are you okay doing it at this earlier hour for now? Yeah, it should not be a problem. Okay. And is tomorrow okay for you? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Yes. And Harshit, likewise? Yes. Okay, so I will schedule us a session for tomorrow and we'll continue. I'll also upload- Is it okay for Justin too? Oh yes, yeah. sorry, Justin, I didn't check with you. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I think it should be fine. Great, all right. If not, well, I don't I want to impede progress. Great, okay, so um, tomorrow, same time and talk to everyone tomorrow then. Thank you, and sorry for the, the quick end. Thanks very much, Harshit. It's so great to have you on the project. Looking forward to, to what we're going to do together. Thank you. Talk to everyone tomorrow. Thank you very much.